Hi, in this video I will continue to discuss the different factors that affect the strength of acids and mainly we will be discussing the inductive effect of electron withdrawing groups at the adjacent carbons and the first case that will be discussed is the effect of electronegativity as the electronegativity of the adjacent uh, elements increases then the stability of the conjugate base will increase because these highly electro-withdrawing elements will be actually removing electrons or moving electrons and shifting electrons toward their side and that's why they are increasing the stability at the anionic uh, part. For example, in this case, if we were asked to arrange the following according to their acidity, then according to the solving strategy that we um, learned before, we have to uh, draw the conjugate bases in each case by just removing the hydrogen and replacing it by a negative charge. So now we ended up with anions that are all at the same element, which is oxygen in all cases. And the main difference between compound number one and compound number two and compound number three is that in one, we have a fluorine next to this negative charge. In two, we have bromine to the negative charge. And in three, we have chlorine next to the negative charge. Now, fluorine is known to be a, the most electronegative element and chlorine followed by bromine which means that in case of fluorine, we will have the highest electron withdrawing effect here. Whereas in case of bromine and chlorine, it will be less. We know according to the rule that as electronegativity increases, the stability will increase, which means that one will be the most stable, followed by three, followed by two. And we know that the stability order and acidity order are actually the same so this is the order of acidity for these compounds however i want to you to pay attention to something usually one of the common mistakes here is that students assume that since we have different elements that are in the same column fluorine chlorine and bromine then they have to use a size rule this is true if the negative charge was at fluorine chlorine or bromine but this is a different case because in this case here the negative charge is at the same element which is oxygen and fluorine and chlorine or bromine are actually next to this element that's why if those different elements are in uh, are next to the negative charge as not the are not and that charge is not at them then we have to use the electronegativity rule and not the size rule and that's how the order was um, determined in this case. The second factor is the effect of number of electron withdrawing groups. As the number of electron withdrawing groups at the adjacent element will in increases, this means that the electron withdrawing power of the group will increase. And again, this is going to increase the stability of anions. Remember that anions are unstable because they have a negative charge. They have excess electron density. So any group or any factor which may reduce the electron density at the anion is considered to be a stabilizing effect. And any factor which is considered to uh, push or add more electron density to, uh, to the anionic side is, coming, is expected to decrease the stability. So based on that, as the number of electron withdrawing groups the, in, increases, then the stability increases. For example, in this case, we have different carboxylic acids. Again, we are arrange, supposed to arrange them according to their stability. And as you can see here, we have O minus. So step one is definitely always uh, drawing the conjugate bases. And you already know, see that we have two, one fluorine, two fluorines, and three fluorines. Again, in this case here, this is going to have the highest stability. Why? Because we have three electron withdrawing groups. So most of the electron density, instead of being concentrated at this oxygen, it's actually withdrawn 
and distribute it toward the fluorine side. In this case here, we have two fluorines which are withdrawing the electrons, and in this case, we have just one fluorine. As the number of electron withdrawing groups increases, stability increases, that's why this is three is going to be the most stable, followed by two, followed by one. And again, this is a stability order, and this is, this is the acidity order. So whenever we have different numbers of electron withdrawing groups, then uh, increasing the number of these electron withdrawing groups will increase stability. The last case will be the effect of position of the electron withdrawing groups. As the electron withdrawing group, as the position of the electron withdrawing group gets closer to the negative charge, then stability will increase. Again, in this example here, after drawing the conjugate bases, and if I was asked to find the main difference between these structures, I would say that in this case here, fluorine is very close. Yes, it is actually the closest to the negative charge, and in this case, it is um, far away from the negative charge. So the main difference between this one, this one, and this one is actually the position of the electron withdrawing group. And as the electron withdrawing group gets closer to this negative charge, then its effect is going to increase. It will have a more powerful effect. Uh, than uh, a group which is far away from the negative charge. And based on that, we can say that 2 will be the most stable because fluorine is very close to, to the O minus, followed by 1, followed by 3. This is the stability order and this is the acidity order. Finally, we will discuss the effect of resonance, and this is actually one of the most important factors that affect stability and acidity. And in this case, as the number of resonance forms increases, the stability increases and the acidity increases. Again, why is that? Because upon resonance, the negative charge will be distributed over um, uh, more than one element, or the electron density will be distributed over a large surface area and this again increases the stability and this is something that we are looking for for example let's say we were given those two which are a carboxylic and an alcohol we know that carboxylic acids are more acidic by four than alcohols but why is that because if i try to draw the conjugate base here and the conjugate base here of course using any of the previous rules that we discussed before is not going to give us an answer but if we really looked at those two compounds we can see that in the case of carboxylic acids or the carboxylate anion this is going to resonate whereas in this case here we don't have resonance so the negative charge in this case is actually distributed over these two oxygens instead of being concentrated at this oxygen and that's why since we have resonance here then this is going to be, one is going to be a more stable anion than two, and that's why one is more acidic than two. Let's consider another example. For example, in this case here, let's say we were asked to compare the acidity of all these three hydrogens. Again, step one is always drawing the conjugate base, and remember to remove the hydrogen and its bond because one of the common mistakes that students do is that they just leave the bond and and put a negative charge and this basically leads to um, complications and of course this is incorrect so always make sure to remove the bond and put the negative charge at this element which is bonded to the hydrogen again if i tried to use any of the previous rules the electronegativity rule the size rule the hybridization rule uh, it's not going to work. If I look carefully, I can see that in this case, uh, this anion can resonate once, whereas in this case, it can resonate tw tw twice, either to the left or to the right. And in this case, actually, there is no resonance. So the negative charge in this case here is distributed at carbon and oxygen. 
In this case here, it's distributed at those two oxygen and the carbon. And in this case, it's actually concentrated in this area. That's why based on the resonance rule, I can say that two is actually the most stable or the most acidic, followed by one, followed by three. Sometimes you will be given different hydrogens or protons that are in the same compound and you will be also asked to predict the stability or the acidity of these protons. Again, just using the, sol the same solving strategy, which is drawing the conjugate bases. So we are going to um, draw the first conjugate base and then I'm going to remove the other proton. So I will keep HB here and remove the second one. And then based on that, I can see that this anion can resonate, whereas this one, it cannot resonate. Again, since we have resonance here, since we have no resonance here, then HA will be considered as a more acidic proton than H. B. And this is going to be the last factor that we are going to discuss. However, I just want to add one more, um, one more case where sometimes the resonance factor may not give you a final answer at the beginning, but it may lead you to, to the right answer. For example, let's say we were given the following compounds. So let's say you were given those two compounds and you were asked which hydrogen is more acidic. Is it this one or this one? Well, if I draw the conjugate bases, then they are going to look like this. Based on the resonance factor, both actually have one resonance form, which means that I cannot say this one has more resonance form than the other ones. However, if I draw the, conjugate, the resonance form, I'm going to end up with this O minus anion versus this N minus anion. Now we have O minus versus N minus. This is rule, one of the previous rules, which is the effect of electronegativity rule. Whereas electronegativity increases, then the stability increases and acidity increases. And that's why in this case, this is going to be the most, the more stable anion and the more acidic compound will be this one. That's why we can say that the hydrogen, if I call it HA, is HA is more acidic than HB because of, uh, of the electronegativity rule. So as you can see here, sometimes if you ended up with compounds that have the same, uh, that have the same number of resonance forms, then by drawing the resonance form, you can tell which one is, is more stable or more acidic. Um, someone might argue that this oxygen is, you can, we can always um, uh, find this answer by just looking, saying that this oxygen is actually more electronegative than this nitrogen. And that's why based on the electron withdrawing group effect of oxygen, uh, this is going to be more stable. Well, this is actually true and we can use this argument, but uh, sometimes it was not going to be that much obvious. And, um, and that's why by drawing the resonance forms, uh, then you will be able to see the rule in, a very, uh, in a, a very clear way. So this is again a solving strategy which you can use to uh, uh, find or arrange assets according to their acidity without having the pKa values.